Hey everyone, welcome to a new video, welcome to Floating in Dreams. Today we are talking about my nude lipstick collection. I've done this video for my reds, I've done it for brights, I've done it for lip gloss, but I haven't really given you a look inside my nude lipstick collection, so I thought we could do that too, so let's get started. Welcome if you're new here, welcome if you're a returning visitor, thank you so very much for joining me today. I am a channel who loves to chat about eyeshadow palettes mainly, and I love trying out Essence and Catrice products for you as well. I am someone who loves to get the use out of their products, so I do regular shop my stashes, I declutter my makeup collection once a year, and I like to really sort of try products before I make up my mind, which is why I like doing these kind of like overview videos, so that I can show you all the swatches, and I will be putting my top 10 favorite nude lipsticks on my lips today. Now, I'm incredibly fair-skinned, so that definitely means that I have preferences that, well, it dictates all of my makeup preferences, really, but especially in terms of nude lipsticks, I struggle for the longest time finding, like, the things I like the best. So I hope this video can be helpful and that if you're a snow angel like me, that you are going to be able to find something in this video that is going to be perfect for you as well. I'm struggling with the lighting a little bit today because we've got a lot of clouds, a lot of sunshine, so it's gonna go in and out, yeah? I've got a natural window, like, there. it's... I can't help it, yeah? So it's gonna do this for, I think, the remainder of the video, but I still wanted to sit down and do this. Um, so let's just get started. I've got five different categories to chat to you about today, which is going to be pinky nudes, I'm going to be talking about, like, deeper nudes, my brown toned nudes, my mauve nudes, and my warm toned nudes, which are sort of like the peachy things. I'm going to be putting my top 10 onto my lips, as already said, but I have one additional category. In terms of liquid lipsticks, I don't love liquid lipsticks in nude colors. If I go for a liquid lip, I need it to stay put, and so I go for colors that are much more intense than a nude. But when we had this liquid lipstick craze, I ended up with a couple of shades that I don't have anywhere else in my lipstick collection, I feel. I mean, if you'll see the shades that I'm going to be swatching out for you, you'll see that I probably have these kind of tones in my other lipsticks as well. But these I'm going to just swatch for you on the back of my hand. I'm not even sure if any of these are still available. Um, so I've got two by Anastasia Beverly Hills. I have the shade Dusty Rose. And this was always, like, this is the shade that you also get in the Soft Glam eyeshadow palette, by the way. So this is what that shade looks like. It's like a deeper mauve rose tone, so it does have quite a bit of purple to it. That's what I prefer, but it's still quite light. And then I also have Veronica. I believe that's what it's called, yes. And I feel it's like the deeper version of Dusty Rose. It's a bit, it's like a cool toned plummy brown, you could say. So this is... If I want to go for like a liquid lip, I would still wear a shade like this. I really enjoy that. I really like the ABH formula, which is why I've kept these two over the years. I decluttered all the other ones I had. And the same pretty much goes for KVD. I still have a couple of bright shades from the line, but I also had a couple of her neutrals. So I have the infamous Lolita. I've got Love Sink and my favorite, which is Double Dare. Uh, and this is a reddish toned nude. But I actually have, as you'll see in the warm tone category, I now have a reddish toned nude, which I may have actually shown in my red lipstick collection, but I'm unsure. So that's why I'm sort of putting it in here just to make sure we show it. Uh, but yeah, I love a, I love reds on me, but I don't always want like a full on intense red. And then a shade like this that's more like a terracotta bricky color that is a bit more brown tone leaning can be very flattering on and still work as a nude, I feel anyways. So... Lolita is pretty brown toned. It's perhaps a little too brown toned for my liking, uh, but I feel it's got a lot of pink running through it as well, which is why I still think it's a very wearable nude lipstick shade. Um, the one that I think I've worn the least is uh, Lovesick. It's very, very cool toned, almost purple leaning. It's still a pink, but it's got quite a lot of like blue, um, which is why I've kept it. But this is the kind of, like, light pink that is almost too pink on me. Like, it can look a little Barbie-ish. This is very light, though, so it never pulls too Barbie pink on me, I feel. But this is a shade that is just a little too much of a clash with my natural lip color, which I feel it always looks a little bit off, I find. And then last but not least, we have Double Dare. 
And as I said, this is a lot more warm toned and for someone who loves cool toned, cool toned, you'll see that I actually have quite a lot of warm toned nude lipsticks because I actually feel that works a little bit better with my complexion, just saying. So yeah, this is what those liquid lips look like on the back of my hand. So then we're moving into pinky toned nudes and I have five of these lipsticks. I've got a couple that I love, which I'm going to be showing you on my lips today. And then I have a couple, one of which is very, very new to me that I also wanted to show you. One of my OG favorites was always the shade Brave, which is a satin by MAC. And this, I'm not sure if you can see, but this, this baby has been through the ringer. It, it just looks really, really like tired and old. It still smells okay. It still feels very creamy. I can still wear this, so I've never like tried to replace this. But this is just not really my favorite kind of nude anymore. I like something that has a little bit more depth and that is actually a little bit more intense because I have found just other lipsticks that have, to me, in my brain, a similar-ish shape, they're probably not the same, but that I feel are a pinky nude that works better on me. Just saying. Very new to me are the new Catrice Power Plumping Flower and Herb Edition lipsticks, and they do a very stunning, very light pink with like a purpley undertone lipstick in that collection as well. It's like a very, very pale mauve. Like if you are very fair skinned and this is your lipstick shade, I think you will really enjoy it. Um, the Power Plumping Gel Lipsticks, as you will see when we get to the end of this video, uh, that line has one of my favorite all-time nude lipsticks in. So of course the lighting is just going in and out so much. Um, but like I said, clouds, I can't control the weather, you guys. Um, so here we have that Catrice lipstick and it just it's really pretty it's far more pink though than the MAC one like it, it's more like a truer pink but I felt when it went on it just looked very pretty and it is a little bit differently from what Catrice usually does and then you'll see that I've got quite a lot of bite lipsticks in a nude lipstick shade because before I was really into lip gloss which I've only been into for like a year and a half Bite Beauty lipsticks were my favorite nudes to wear because they were so rich and creamy. So that's why I have quite a few neutrals by them. This is the shade Fig, and I feel it's like sort of like bridging the gap almost between these two shades. So again, quite pink, but still a neutral. Not one I've worn a lot, as you will see. You'll see my favorite Bite Beauty nude in a minute because that's in one of the other categories. But yeah, this was, this was a lovely lipstick. Um, because I had Brave, I didn't wear it as much. Brave is just a little bit more purple and a little bit deeper than these ones are, but it's still pink, which is why I always liked it. In this category, the one that I liked best from Bite is Pepper. And this one, it's perhaps a little bit more brown, and you can, I'm not sure if you can see, but that, that baby's been to town. Like, I've worn this down, and the B is starting to disappear from the stamp that it has. That's how much I've worn this. And this is definitely a little bit more brown leaning, but I feel that on me, it still looks quite pink. So let me show you this one on because it's one of my favorites. So that's what Pepper looks like on me. It is perhaps not as true of a pink as the other ones, but I feel that it's very sort of similar what Brave does on me as well, because it has a bit of that brown undertone and it's a bit deeper. It just works much better on me than most other things that I have for sure. Very new in my collection is Charlotte Tilbury's Wedding Bells. I believe this is in her Matte Revolution line, but it came in this really stunning limited edition packaging and over the Black Friday sale, I was definitely sucked into some more Charlotte Tilbury lipsticks, which is why next month, my lipstick video that month is going to be swatching all of my Charlotte Tilbury lipsticks for you. So you'll see it again then. <laughs> um, but this is again, it's like a warm pinky nude, I would say. It's definitely still a pink and it's far more pink than something like Pillow Talk, which we'll chat about later. And also Very Victoria, which is are like two other like nudes that she does that are very pretty. Uh, and this is another one that I want to put on my lips for you. Um, because yes, it's a pink and it's a nude, but it's warm. So let me take this one off and put this one on. And that will be Wedding Bells by Charlotte Tilbury. 
This is very pretty. I could have put this perhaps with the more warm tone things, but I feel that once you start putting this right, like, up next to a straight up peach nude, it doesn't look that peach. It just looks a little bit more pinky. So that's why I do really enjoy Wedding Bells. This is a really good, like, everyday shade for sure. And you can very nicely whip it on and just, it, it's going to last. I love Charlotte Tilbury lipsticks for that reason. And my next category are deeper nudes. And I've got six of those. And I've got three of them to swatch them on my lips for you. Because this is quite possibly my favorite kind of nudes to wear. So I've got a couple here that you've heard me raving about a lot of the times. These are all like deeper versions of these pinky tones. And they're sort of like a, a step up from the standard mauve tone. I think that a lot of people wouldn't even necessarily categorize these as nudes. Because they are like sort of between a nude and a colorful shade, I would say. Um, but on me, because I'm very fair, I find that if a nude is too light, it really drains me. So I do need something that truly adds color. And a lot of the like standard, like very popular nude lipsticks I found never really worked on me that well because they just made me look very dead. And I mean, I started wearing makeup when concealer lips were like all the rage. Like, people would literally just put concealer over their lips and that was the look. And I was never able to get away with it because I've got quite pigmented lips myself. So I like to give that more of a oomph. And then these shades really work really well. These are definitely, these are my lips but better kind of shades. Um, because they really work with the undertone of my lips really well and they just sort of amplify that. But they are deep for a nude. So the ones that I won't be swatching for you on my lips are actually a very affordable option. We have the Catrice uh, Vegan Collagen Matte Lipstick in the shade Be Fearless. This is the only one from this collection that I kept around in my actual lipstick collection after I swatched the entire line. I will leave that video linked down below if you want to see it. Um, this was, I think, the shade that worked really well on me. It is that sort of nude that I prefer and I think actually it kind of, yeah, you can see that it's a lot deeper than what we've got going on into this category. So I like my nudes to just have a bit of oomph. I just do. And then from very affordable, we go to very bougie. This is quite possibly one of the most expensive lipsticks in my entire collection. This is by Gucci. And this is one of their uh, satin lipsticks in 203 Mildred Rosewood. And this was a shade that when I swatched these in store, I was immediately taken with. Like, this looks so, so pretty. But I've only owned this for like six weeks, so I haven't really gotten a lot of chances to reach for this a lot. And there's actually one of the other Gucci lipsticks that I bought alongside with this that I definitely wanted to show you on in today's video, which is why we're going to be swatching that one. But yeah, Mildred Rosewood is one that I'm very excited to try more. And these satin lipsticks by Gucci have some really really good pigmentation like very creamy very rich uh, and this has definitely also a bit more red running through it so it perhaps could have gone with like the warmer tones but i feel like goes a bit better in this category personally and then last but not least the bite beauty lipstick that i created in the bite beauty lab i went to the bite beauty lab in new york when i was there in 2019 and i made myself a red and a nude, because those are the two shades I tend to reach for the most. So I made my perfect nude. And then two weeks later, Lisa Eldred Eldridge came out with some new, or I bought, I think I bought them for the first time. I don't think this was new to the line. And I bought Velvet Muse. And as it turns out, Velvet Muse is an exact dupe <laughs> for the nude lipstick I made in the Buy Beauty Lip Lab. So I don't end up wearing this as much, because I like the formula of this a bit better, because in this formula, I went with a more creamy formula, and because I, that's just what I prefer in a nude, really. Um, so this, I felt, like on the lips, this looks identical to Lisa Eldridge's Velvet Nudes. I actually put them side by side in a video once where I put the one lipstick on my bottom lip and the other on my top lip, and you couldn't see a difference. So there you have the Buy Beauty Lip Lab creation that I made that I really really like. I really enjoy it. But I like this just a little bit better. You know how much I love my Lisa Eldridge lipsticks. Now her nudes aren't my favorites because they're all quite warm toned. This is the one that I reach for the most. So that's why this gets a mention. 
and a, and a lip swatch because it deserves that honor. Uh, let me put this guy over here on my thumb. So that's the Lisa Eldridge right there. So there we have Velvet Muse. And then the other two I want to swatch out for you are two of my other favorite brands for nudes, which is Max Twig. This is sort of like brownish, but it's still very pinky leaning as well. I really enjoy this. This this just works really well on my complexion. It could have gone in the pink category perhaps, because it kind of goes with that. Um, it's quite similar to uh, Wedding Bells actually, I think. But yeah, this is what Twig looks like. It's got a bit more depth than most of the rosy things that I already showed you, which is why I got to go into this category. There we have Twig apply to the face. So this is what it looks like when I wear it and it definitely pulls a bit more pinky but it does have more depth than the pinks I just showed you which is why I like it. And finally in this category now I just sh showed you Pepper which was looking beat up. You know you've used your lipstick a lot when it starts to look flat. <laughs> <laughs> this is Rhubarb from Bite Beauty and this so sad they no longer do this shade. Uh, I would buy a backup in a heartbeat. This this thing is Oh, so great. And this is what I mean with like a deeper nude shade. It's right here. Like this is, I think the deepest one actually here. Um, but that's why these all go into the same category for me because this made me realize that I just need a nude with a bit more color to it for it to work on me. So I need shades that color tone wise go with a lot of different things. But to work, for it to work on my skin tone, I just can't have it to be that light. And that's what Rupert looks like on my face. Oh, wow, we've got a cloud, which is helping a lot with the way this looks. <laughs> so yeah, this has always been one of my favorites. It's got quite a lot of purple running through it. I'm not going to lie. Like, this is definitely not something that you're going to like if you have a very warm tone, I think. But. So from the next category, we're going to talk brown to the lipsticks, but none of these are going to go onto my lips. In fact, I'm actually quite surprised I own six brown tone nudes. Like... Who am I? Who is this person? Because I don't love a warm tone on myself and yet I somehow have ended up with six brown tone nudes. Like how? So we've got the OG Whirl, which I was sort of wondering, like, should it put it in, in this video? Because I don't feel it goes very nude on me. Like this is just not a great, great nude for someone with my complexion. It's a bit too dark. It's far too warm tone, but I've always liked combining it with the OG Velvet Teddy. This is one of my oldest MAC, MAC lipsticks. I Does this smell okay? Yeah, it still applies and smells okay. I definitely need to start replacing some of these like OG MAC lipsticks because some of these are old. So yeah, Velvet Teddy is more of a nude on me, I feel, but these are two shades that I like combining to do a bit of an ombre lip. So I like applying Whirl first and then taking off a little bit of the middle and then t putting on Velvet Teddy over top. And that sort of gives that like 90s brown tone nude lip for me in a way that I think is more flattering than if I were to use a lip liner. So I like combining those two shades. If I wear Whirl, it's never by itself. Velvet Teddy I have worn by itself, but I would reach for Twig much, much quicker. Uh, Twig is over here and it just has like, do you just see that it's far more brown toned um, uh, Velvet Teddy is than Twig. Twig has a little bit more of a pinky purple running through it. Now in a complete league of its own, and that's I think why I've got six brown tone nudes, I've got Thistle from Bite because I have taupey shades as well. And this is like a cool toned grayish brown. It looks really stunning on. Shall I just whip this on in a minute just to show you what it does? I hope that cloud stays because that helps the lighting a lot. But yeah, this is different for sure but I feel it works really well on my complexion which is why I've always kept it around I believe this was even limited edition at a time like with these bite lipsticks like again some of these actually I think I need to chuck but you know if they still work fine and they smell okay and they don't do anything weird to my lips I don't I'm not against wearing older makeup um, I don't like if they don't grow fungus I'm okay I guess So this is what Thistle does when I wear it. It doesn't go with this look. I definitely need to 
like create a certain eye look for this to work on me but do you just see that it pulls very purple on me it's not a cool tone brown anymore when I put it on it pulls very very lilac almost but yeah this is I think it, it just it's something different to wear and I feel the same way about the ultimate matte from Catrice this is in the shade Topless in Love. This is a bit deeper and it's more brown toned and I've always kept this shade around because I've just... I've never seen Catrice do anything like this ever again and that's why it gets to stay in my collection. I also really like the red from this collection but it was discontinued years ago I'm afraid. So yeah, I do have two like taupey brown shades and if I wear a brown I tend to go for this more so than anything else. However, I do have two more recent finds, one very affordable, one more bougie. I have Lisa Eldridge's Velvet Fawn, and this is her brownie tone nude. And I didn't buy this initially because I thought it wasn't going to be pretty on me. That, that was the suspicion. But in the end, now that I've tried it a couple of times, I'm like, it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. This is definitely prettier than I had expected. And it's definitely sort of like that Velvet Teddy kind of vibe, I feel. So in terms of like if, if Velvet Teddy would expire, I have something similar, I feel. But the surprise to me was the H&M Beauty, is this their cream lipstick? Yes, in I am in chalk. Um, so this is a chocolatey brown, but it's like very much like a cooler toned chocolatey brown. So I thought this was really pretty and it actually was very pretty on as well. Oh, again, it's it's pretty similar to Velvet Teddy. Like, this is Velvet Teddy, and that is the H&M lipstick. So this was pretty. So that's why it got to stay in my collection after I did my full face of H&M. Um, I definitely did like this quite a bit. So, so my camera cut off, and I don't know where it was left, so I'm going to chat to you about my mauve tone nudes uh, next. And this is my favorite category. I've got nine of these. There's a lot. I've got six to just chat about and three to apply to my face. So first up is HD Dawn from the Revlon line. I don't even know what this product is called anymore. Do they still do this? Revlon is no longer available in the Netherlands, so I can't check. Um, but this is one of those twist up, balmy kind of situations. And this I've worn so, so much. And it's like this very sheer, balmy, it very much reminds me of the kind of formula that the uh, Catrice Power Plumping Gel lipsticks have. Um, but then in a mauve tone, which in that line, there just wasn't a really good mauve tone, the Catrice one. So this is sort of like my balmy nude kind of situation. But I think I have something that's similar, maybe not shade-wise, but formula, it comes close. And it's the Rare Beauty Balm, I believe this is called. Dewy Lip Balm in the shade Sincere. And this is just a mini, it came in a little set with the gloss, which I love. And this, because I love the gloss so much, I haven't been reaching for this so much, but this I feel is also that balmy sort of texture. This is far more pink though. The HD Dawn one has a bit more brown running through it. It's really stunning, really pretty. I really like the, the texture of this. This is a good lipstick, but I feel it's more like a tinted lip balm kind of situation than a true, true lipstick, if that makes sense. Then another H&M lipstick, I had never tried their mattes before and the shade that really stood out to me was London Season. So again, if you're looking for good, affordable, mauve nudes, check out the H&M line because they do some really good shades. And London Season, I mean, the name in itself already intrigued me, that's why I wanted to try it. And this pulled surprisingly mauve toned on me, so I was very happy with this. And that's why I decided out of all of the like mattes that I bought from them. This is the only one that I've kept because it was the only one that I truly, truly liked. So there is the H&M. And then from MAC, an OG that I don't really reach for that much, but this made me realize how much I love mauve tones in lipsticks. And this is Mare. And, oh, this looks so beat up. <laughs> and I would have swatched this on my lips for you if it wasn't for some of the other things I now own. This is from their matte lipstick range, and this... Oh, I used to wear this non-stop years ago. Like, this was all I would wear. Um, and this is just, it's a lovely lipstick till this day. It still performs well, works really lovely on me, and this is just a really good mauve tone, but it's not too light. Like, some mauve tones can be very light. This isn't. Speaking of lighter mauve tones, we have Urban Decay's Backtalk. 
Do they still do this? Is this in their updated line? I don't know, because Urban Decay is being discontinued here, so I wouldn't know. But this is a very light mauve tone, and it's, I think, one of the best mauve tone matte lipsticks that's ever been released. So I've always loved this one. Let me put it over here so we don't run out of space. So there we have the Urban Decay. Really lovely. It would have been, again, in my favorites, but I have just found a couple that I feel have sort of knocked this off of its top spot, and those are going to be the ones that I swatch. Then I have Sake by Bite as well, and this is sort of like the lighter version of Rhubarb. That's how I've always understood this in my brain. It's a little bit more purpley than the other shades that I have shown you so far. So this is what Sake looks like. It's very rich, very creamy, really pretty, and uh, yeah, but because I already have this shade like a million times over, uh, I haven't worn this as much as the others, but as I said, in the winter time when my lips need a little bit more nourishment, I was always reaching for my Bite Beauty lipsticks over, but now I just tend to wear a gloss. Then for the ones that I want to put on my face, Gucci Matte Lipstick in Peggy Taupe. The shade number is 204. This is not a taupe. I don't know why they decided to call this Peggy Taupe, because it's not a taupe. And I sort of looked at this swatched on the website, and I was like, that's not a taupe, even though the... Because what Gucci does is that they do the same shade in different formulas, and in the other formulas, it does look a lot more brown. But in the matte, it looks like a mauve tone. And on me, it pulls mauve. And since this is like a recent discovery, I was like, right, I'm going to put that in. So yeah, this is what the Gucci looks like, so... Let me put this on my lips for you. And there you have a very, very pretty, stunning, mauve toned lipstick. Like this, it's the updated version of the Urban Decay for me. Now, you do have to know that this does have a slight floral scent to it, so you do have to like that. It's not too overbearing or overpowering. It's not so lipsticky and perfumey that you go like wow this smells like cupcakes it's not like that but it you do kind of as you put it on you do smell something but it's nothing too overpowering or overbearing so that would be the gucci now another brand that i love for nude lipsticks is charlotte tilbury however her nudes like lisa eldridge like a lot of lines they just don't pull very cool toned so they don't really she also doesn't really have a really great mauve but what fits in this category in my brain is very Victoria. It is a more cool tone nude for sure. And out of the entire Charlotte Tilbury line, this is my favorite nude by her. I own P Pillow Talk, you'll see it in a minute, but this is not my, that's just not my favorite because I think this works much better on my complexion. But swatched next to all of this, you can just see that this is so much more warm toned than many of the other shades here. So let me put this on my lips. And this, for me, is perfection, because as you can see, it does something for my face, but not that much. Like this is perfect if I wanna go for something super neutral, super duper, like barely there. It's definitely like this, like, well, I already mentioned the, the phrase, my lips, but better, but this is definitely like, my lips but better but i still want it to look nude like this just kind of perfects my lips it doesn't add any color to it it doesn't make them stand out it doesn't do my lips but better in that kind of sense but this is definitely like just a more perfected version of what i, what I already have naturally going on so that's why very victoria has been my favorite charlotte tilbury nude for sure and finally, I love recommending affordable stuff to you guys as well, and the Kiko Milano Velvet Passion Lipsticks have a beautiful mauve tone nude in their lineup. It's called 315. I'm pretty sure it's just called Mauve Nude. And this is this has been the replacement for Urban Decay's Backtalk. That's how much I like it. I really like the formula. I really like the shade. I just, I have so many lipsticks that I don't reach for it enough, sadly. Uh, and this is definitely a little bit more like plummy again. So this is the bit, the strongest purpley undertone of all of these mauve tones, I find. But yeah, this is just this is just a lovely lovely lipstick shade and I really enjoy wearing this. 
So I would say that this is very similar to the Catrice, like very pinky toned one that I showed you at the start. Like it pulls quite pink on me, quite pale. Um, but this is matte and the Catrice one is more of a glossy fin finish, which is why I prefer that at the moment because I'm more into glosses than I am this. But this is for those like very, like if you're very fair skinned and you have very strong cool toned undertone, then this is going to be stunning on you. I love this. I've got very neutral undertones in my skin. So I can get away with both warm and cool, which is why I have such an array of neutrals. And that's why I think it really was a struggle to find my perfect nude lipstick. I mean, there's a reason why I've got 10 of them, really. <laughs> so uh, yeah, those were the mauve tones. So let's move on to warm tone nudes, which is going to be the final category. I've got two, four, six, eight. So I've got eight of these here, and I'm going to be swatching two of them for you on my lips. And these are like, pretty long-standing favorites. There's a couple here that are quite new to me, a couple here that I bought specifically for videos that I don't think I'll get a lot of wear out of. Um, let's just start with the OG, which is Charlotte Tilbury's Pillow Talk. I, I already mentioned that I have this shade and that I like it, but I don't wear this a lot. And the reason for it is because I own Very Victoria. So there we have Pillow Talk and because I own this lipstick, which is a Catrice Power Plumping Gel Lipstick in 030 Speak Up. Now this is a glossy like formula. It's more hydrating on the lips. I find it very comfortable. A lot of people have told me that on them it disappears really quickly, but I can get away with just touching this up after lunchtime and then I'm good. So I used one of these up in the past. That's how much I like it. And it's a full on shade dupe for Pillow Talk at a fraction of the cost. And because it isn't matte, I mean, Charlotte Tilbury mattes are great. They're not flat. They're still very comfortable and, and wearable for your lips for sure. But I just prefer this. So that's why this is what I'm gonna show you on. And that would be 030 Speak Up. My pillow talk dupe that I just really, really love and adore. Um, and I would pick this, if I want to go for this kind of nude, I go for the Catrice over the Charlotte. So then I have two Ch Lisa Eldridge lipsticks, and I mentioned that there are lipsticks in this part of my nude lipstick collection that I bought specifically for videos, and I only made an exception for Lisa Eldridge because I love her True Velvet so much. So I have Velvet Affair and Velvet Intrigue. Now I wasn't really sure where to put Velvet Intrigue, because it's like a beigey nude, and that's just not my vibe. It just isn't. I don't wear this a lot, but I think actually, yeah. It's quite similar to Pillow Talk <laughs> and the Catrice one, so that's why I feel it still worked on me, but I just know this is not going to be my favorite. It's perhaps a little bit lighter even. It's like borderline too pale. And Velvet Affair could have gone into the brown tone nude category as well, I'm sure. Um, but this has a bit of a yellow undertone, which is why, again, if you have a super warm undertone, you're gonna love this lipstick, I'm sure. Like, it's going to look stunning on you, and especially if you have a deeper skin tone. Like, I think, like, if you have dark skin and a warm undertone, this can be so, so lovely for you. But on me, I just felt it was a little bit too much of a clash. So I kind of have them to complete the collection, and because I wanted to film a video with all of my Lisa Eldridge True Velvets, link in the description box down below, but it's not something I wear on the daily. Um, another lipstick that I sort of came by by accident was Charlotte Tilbury's Glowin Gen. This is from her Hot Lips line and I ha hadn't tried any of those, so I was like, well, if I get it free as a gift with purchase because I'm spending an X amount of money on the Charlotte Tilbury uh, website for Black Friday, might as well try this. And I ended up liking it a lot more than I thought based on the description. This is more, like, it's quite orange for my liking. Like, I don't love it for that reason. It's like, yeah, perhaps a little reddish toned, like a terracotta nude. That's what I would call it. It was very, very pretty on, but if I have to go terracotta nude in like a creamy formula, I would go for this baby. This is the Gucci Voile lipstick. This is 201 The Painted Veil, and I bought this over the summertime, and I don't like these like corally terracotta nudes on myself most of the time, but when I bought this and I tried it on, I was like, I'm obsessed, I love this. 
So I'm not sure if it's a shade dupe. I don't think so. And I think one of the reasons why I like this so much is because it's so sheer. <laughs> it's a very sheer, very balmy sort of lipstick. Gucci has four different formulas and they go up in intensity and I believe this is the least intense one. Um, I'm going to round out my Gucci lipstick uh, collection a little bit over the next couple of months and then once I've tried all of the different formulas I definitely want to do a lipstick video with all of the Gucci lipsticks I then have. I will never be able to be able to buy their entire line. I, it's just way too expensive. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm sort of trying to wrap my head around what this line has to offer by Gucci and then I want to do a dedicated video showing you all of these things on. So let me show you this because this was the instigator and for someone who doesn't love warm tone nudes on themselves, this is quite special. So there we have the Gucci and it just, it looks very pretty on. I did uh, like went to a store to pick this out because these lipsticks are very expensive and I just I just knew that I wanted to make sure that I got the shade and this is I think it does something similar for me as similarly for me as the Catrice one does where it has a bit of that glossy balmy sort of texture which is why it still works on me I think finally we have Max Stay Curious I mentioned Double Dare and reddish tone nudes at the start of the video. This is my pick for a reddish tone nude, um, so that's why this got to go here. Um, you can just see that it has quite a lot of red running through it. Very pretty on. It's in their uh, Powder Kiss formula, so it has this sort of soft focus finish, which I also really enjoy with a nude lipstick. And then finally, we have Verbena from Bite, and this has been an orange tone nude that I have worn quite a bit. Uh, I feel it's quite similar to some of the other things we've got going on here, but this is one where I'm like, hmm, this, like some of these bite lipsticks, I think it's time to declutter them because they're getting very old and maybe just keep like the handful of shades that I truly love and get rid of the rest because these are definitely starting to turn not that great. But yeah, these are the warm tone nudes. And as you can see, they're all quite similar, so yeah, I'm, I'm, and the, the ones I like the best are the ones that have a bit of shine, a bit of glow to the, to the lips, like a shiny formula. So that's what I wanted to share with you in terms of nude uh, lipsticks. That's my entire nude lipstick collection for you. I do apologize about the lighting in this video, but I've got a balcony that covers this window in the summertime and it's just not happening. I thought we had a very cloudy day today, because in the wintertime I can only film in this, in this room if it's very cloudy. It wasn't. Right when I sat down to film the video, we got sunshine, which is why the video ended up this way. Oh well, that's the way things go. Thanks for watching the video. Thumbs it up if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more by me. I make three new videos a week, so hope to see you in my next video. See you then. Bye-bye.